Well, hello everyone and good afternoon. We are here in week two of Mom Hacks. And today, Erin Wagner is joining us from Servant Solutions. Erin is a financial guru and is going to share with us some tips and tricks as a mom too on how to kind of save some money and start a, a savings account if that's something that is your goal. So um, today I've asked Erin a couple questions and she's going to share them with us. So our first question, Erin, um, is what it, what's one tip that you have right now for busy moms who are trying to trying to help save some extra money? Yeah, I think that is such a great question because so many people are constantly saying, my life is just so busy. I react a lot to my days instead of being proactive to them. And so I think finances land the same way. And I'm a mom of three boys and um, we're solid in spring soccer right now. And so I know what it means. And for us, a lot of times that question centers around food, right? Like, What does it mean to get food on the table yeah. at night? And if I'm reacting to my week, that looks like eating out a lot more and it looks like us spending a lot more money. And so I think for moms, we carry so much mental weight and that mental weight includes finances and it yeah. come, and it feels a lot like should we or shouldn't we eat out? Um, should I or shouldn't I buy this on Amazon? It would be a lot easier, but maybe not the best price. Should I or shouldn't I? And so I think the more proactive I can be in preparing for my week, the better I feel about my financial decisions when I get to the end of the week. And so that looks like placing a grocery order on Sunday evening and having the discipline to go home and make the spaghetti before soccer practice instead of picking something up. And so sometimes I think it means setting down some of your mental weight in your day and spending time thinking about what's coming up in the next couple of days and making a plan. I love that, um, that mental weight. Like that is such a real thing for moms, probably for, you know, any anyone really. But yeah. I love how you said that. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So here's the question that um, I'm so interested about. Okay. Um, I think probably many are is how, what's a good way to start paying off some debt, whether that's credit card, um, college, uh, whatever that might look like. What, what's a good way to kind of start that process? Yeah, I, I completely agree. So I think it's easy for a family to kind of get into maintenance mode and then some debt can accumulate and all of a sudden you're thinking now, how do I get to a place where I'm going to be able to pay that off? And I, I, no one talks about it, right? We, we we all kind of have like our little things of shame that we don't want to talk about, but probably every family has been there where they've had some debt that they're carrying and that they need to get paid off. And I really think, um, momentum is your best friend. So if you have a small debt, even if it has a low interest rate, it feels good just to make progress. So we are motive, we are as humans, we're motivated by progress. And if you feel like you're making these payments, but it's not generating any fruit, then it's easy to kind of freeze and feel like it's not worth it. So let's say we have three debts and you have one that is small. I would recommend just tackling that one as quickly as you can to feel like now I only have two and then tackle yeah. the next one and see if you can get some momentum. Don't pay attention to interest rates. Don't pay attention to um, the things that maybe we're conditioned to think about, but instead look for a little wins. Um, the other thing I would say about debt is, um, and my mom preached this to me growing up, was um, always pay just a little bit more than what it asks you to pay. So if our yes. my monthly mortgage is, is um, $800, then my mom would say, just pay $850. And that adds up more than what you would think over time. You can really impact how much interest you're paying. And so it might feel really small, but always like whatever that statement says, try to pay just a little bit more and you'd be surprised at how quickly that can create a win for you. Yeah. So, so ladies, small wins and pay a little bit extra is what I'm hearing you say yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Is there a good, um, 
savings app or a financial app that you can download onto your you know phone tablet anything like that that you would kind of help recommend whether that's managing a debt or creating a savings account is there anything like that out there Erin yeah I laughed when I read this question from you because I am the worst at these things so <laughs> I'm just this is going to be pure vulnerability I am really great at putting a budget together and then paying zero attention to it so <laughs> I'll put it all together and I'll feel really good about myself. And then I just go about my merry way and spend money and I don't go back to it. So I don't know if other people are that way. It seems like that's a common thing that I hear is that people, you, we have all these really great intentions. We spend this time, we put this budget together and then we um, move on because we that's what we do. And so I have found a, um, Pete the Planner is a financial planner based out of Indianapolis, and I really like him. I like the stuff that he puts out. He's um, he's funny, and he makes everything really relatable. And he came up with this system, and I really like it. It's a little old school, but I think it's really helpful. And I use it, and it has helped me a lot. And it's, it's a highlighter method is what he calls it. And all you do is you print your bank statement, and you print your credit card statement for the month. And then you have four highlighters and you're going to highlight different things on those statements. One of the main ones is to highlight your fixed expenses, things you can't do anything about. So that mortgage payment, your car payment, um, insurance payments, the things that are going to happen no matter what, the just part of life. You're going to highlight those one color and then he, you're going to highlight your income one color and then you're going to highlight some of your discretionary spending um so for me for my family of five with with boys in my house food is a big is our biggest spender and so i'm going to highlight all of our food expenses and then i'm going to highlight all of our entertainment expenses because these are the areas that we can have some control over and each month i just add those up i add up my different colors are my expenses more than my income I've got a problem. Um, is my food, does it seem like each month I'm spending more on food? I should probably think um, the next week, the next time when I think about eating out, maybe we should just make the spaghetti instead and stay in. <laughs> or the next time we get invited out on the weekend, we should probably say no and not go out to eat. So mm -hmm. I have found that highlighting and really looking at my spending is way more effective than spending time creating and setting up a budgeting app and and um because you set that up on the front end and then i don't follow up with it on the back end so instead sure. looking at my spending each month highlighting it and co color coding it not getting really granular and trying to co come up with every single budget category but just what can i do in these four big categories um to sure. make a difference okay yeah that's super helpful Love that. I know I have the same problem where I have all these grand expectations where I'm going to, you know, like you said, set up a budget and do all these things. And then I, you know, life gets in the way, right? We get busy. So yeah. this is probably okay. like an hour a month. And so it just yeah. makes it a little bit more doable. Plus, I don't like all the notifications yeah. on my phone and all the alerts. And every time yeah. I go through Starbucks that judging me, I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. So with the increased costs of, you know, gas and food and groceries, all of these things happening, how, what have you done for your family to kind of stay within that budget? Are there some things that you, tips and tricks you can give us for that? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't like this question just because those are the things and we're in a season of high inflation right now and um, try to keep that in perspective and when I fill up my tank and I, I know that that higher gas price is because of what's going on in Ukraine. And mm -hmm. so that perspective of thank you, Jesus, that I yes. safe and my family is safe here. And yes, but also I feel the pinch of that, that that is significantly sure. more expensive to fill up my tank than it was a couple of months ago. And mm -hmm. Everything you just listed, gas and groceries, those are things that our families have to have. And so we right. can't not do them. And what that means is we have to cut back on discretionary spending a little bit when when our fixed expenses and our, um, our expenses that we can't avoid in life go up. It requires some, some critical thinking on our discretionary spending. And that's just the reality of every family right now 
is sure. we might not be able to to get the new dress or we might not be able to um, pay the new enrollment fee for the next sport and we might just have to skip that. And that might look like more family hikes in nature or um, spending time outside as we go into summer. Luckily, we're going into the nicest time here in Indiana. That might yeah. not be true to everybody. Um, yeah where we can spend time outside. Um, that would be what my family would be doing right now. Can we go on a bike yeah. ride instead of going to the movie theater and yeah. trying to make those decisions, those intentional decisions? Yeah, getting creative. I love how that's basically what you're saying is you just got to get creative with that. So instead of, you know, the movies, we do a family activity at home or outside or my yeah. kids love running in the, you know, with the sprinkler. And so, you know, that is more fun to them than probably going to a movie anyway. So yes. yeah. um, what I, the other thing I asked is, you know, you, you kind of share if there was anything else that we had missed, but uh, I did think of something and that would be, are there good, I've heard of some good college saving things for kids, like as a, as a mom. So what, what would that be in your opinion? Have, what have you used or what would you recommend for that? Yeah. So every state has, um, they're called 529 accounts in every okay. state there. It's a state regulated. So it depends on state by state, but um, for Indiana, our 529 plan is really great and they provide tax credits. And so you're highly motivated to create a 529 account. I would recommend doing it as young as you can for your kiddos because then you get time value of money that you can put some money in when they're young and it will grow as um, they near college age. And, um, and, and then on top of that, you can get tax credits. So in Indiana, it's up to a $5,000 tax credit, which is a dollar for dollar reduction. So I'd much rather put that $5,000 in an account for my kid for college than I would um, give it to the government as a tax. And so re care looking up a 529 and then Googling 529 in your state will send you to the right place where you can then see what the benefits are for saving for college. But I would highly recommend having a 529. The other really nice thing is that those accounts are portable between your kiddos. So if you save, so we created a 529 for our firstborn and then um, knew that if we didn't use everything that was in there, we can just port it to our second born and then to our third born. So it's not just tied to your kid. You don't have to worry about, oh, do I have the right amount in there for each kiddo? Mm -hmm. They're real portable too. And as long as you transfer them to another kid, then you don't, you, you still get the tax benefits. So that's awesome. Yeah, I would definitely recommend looking into those. Okay. Yeah. Anything else that you'd like to share with our, our group today about finances or um, budgeting or anything like that? Um, yeah, I think I just would like to sit, to give a word of encouragement. It's not easy and it's not something that everyone's talking about. And so you just kind of feel left to figure it out on your own a little bit. So one, I would encourage you to talk to people your friends about it, to be willing to say, this is hard for me. These are the things and ask them for their tips. One of, I was telling the girls in the office that I was jumping on to do this and she said, oh, my first piece of advice would be leave it in your Amazon cart for a day because you be, she's like, I put so many things in my cart and then I, <laughs> I a day later, I don't want it near as much as I wanted it that day. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. And so I think the more we talk mm -hmm. about and the more we normalize the conversation, the better. And then the other mm -hmm that inflation and times of rising prices are all cyclical. So let's be disciplined and let's be intentional about our decisions right now. And then knowing that it'll all come around and um, the market will calm down and, um, and then, and we'll have periods where we, these things won't be so top of mind. And so just ride the wave and be willing to ride the wave, even when it feels a little out of control right now. Yeah. Erin, thank you for your encouragement. I love your spirit. Um, just how, you know, like you have shared with us just some great tips and tricks. And from your heart, I can hear your heart in that. And I love yeah. that. Um, just the encouragement of, you know, why things are more expensive. And so you're thankful that your family safe, even though you're still feeling some of the effects of that. Yeah. And so um, I would just say thank you again for sharing your heart with us and some practical things that we can do 
um, to help our families save money and be good stewards of what God has entrusted us to, right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, ladies, join us next week again on Tuesday at 2 p.m. for Mom Hacks. We'll have um, another great tips and tricks for you. We've not decided yet what that will be yet, but stay tuned and watch our Instagram and Facebook for those. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day.